Welcome, friends. It is Saturday morning, so we're going to do another one of our most watched recipe videos on YouTube videos. And today I want to do a buttermilk roasted chicken recipe. And so we'll filter that by view count. And okay, so um, the top two videos are by Everyday Food with Sarah Carey. Um, and they're both a buttermilk roasted chicken, which is I find kind of interesting. Um, and they're both from six years ago, which I find kind of interesting that they did two together so quickly. And I'm going to pass those by. It's my show, and I get to decide the rules. And I'm going to pass those by because I know that Everyday Food um, with Sarah Carey has a huge team behind them. And I've watched the videos now, and I know that they're going to work. There's a lot of flavor going on. Uh, despite what the comments say, um, those would be solid recipes. The number third one, I'm going to pass that one over too because the number four recipe video actually catches my eye. And it is less of a recipe video and more of a trailer for a Netflix show called Salt, Fat, Acid, and Heat. And the reason I want to do this recipe is a lot of cooks, a lot of YouTube cooks, a lot of uh, online blogger recipe sites don't grasp fully um, the relationship between salt, fat, acid, and heat. And how you, with those four things, you can make a very simple recipe sing and bring in a lot of flavors. And so if you look back to the recipe that we did last Saturday for chicken marsala, it didn't have salt, it didn't have acid, um, and it was very bland. It was missing two elements that would have rounded the whole dish out. And as we work towards making a new one of those recipes, uh, we're redoing the chicken marsala to make it better, you have to bring all of those things into balance. And so I want to see if this buttermilk marinated roast chicken is in balance. I'm hoping that it is. Um, so let's get started. And so this is it. Three ingredients. I've got a small chicken already in a Ziploc bag ready to go. Um, just makes it easier so I don't have to stop and wash my hands. We've got some buttermilk and we've got some salt. So into the bag I'm going to put the salt. Um, you don't really have to rub it all over the chicken. You don't really have to mix it into the buttermilk because as soon as you put the buttermilk in, it's all going to stabilize and it's just going to be fine. Then we put in about a half liter or two cups of buttermilk. And buttermilk is going to bring fat and it's going to bring the acid because buttermilk that we buy um, in North America, Le de Beur, that we buy in North America isn't actually buttermilk. It is um, just cultured milk. It's kind of halfway between a really thin yogurt and a kefir. So it has a very high acid content and it has more fat than true traditional buttermilk would have. So into the bag, just gonna give it a shake, mix it all around, make sure that the Buttermilk and salt is going to mix together. It's going to get inside the chicken. I'm going to leave this on the tray and I'm going to stick it in the fridge. The recipe says somewhere between 8 and 24 hours. I'm going to go the full 24 hours on this one. Um, so into the fridge and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so I took the chicken out of the fridge about an hour ago. Uh, the recipe really recommends that you take it out and you let it come up to room temperature. It's nowhere close to room temperature, even after an hour. So I think that's a discussion and a, uh, a cooking mythology test for another day. So I'm going to take the chicken out of the buttermilk. And it's going to be messy, so I'm going to leave it on this tray. We'll close up the buttermilk because I don't want it to get everywhere. Now the recipe says to get as much of the buttermilk off the chicken as possible without being uh, too crazy about it. So I'm just going to take a tea towel 
and wipe as much off as I can. So we don't use paper towels here in the studio. Um, I never have them. I just always use tea towels and that'll just go in the washing machine. So now we need to tie the chicken up. So I tuck the wings underneath and this is going to prove to be a very difficult chicken. Um, it's a very tiny chicken and we need to tie it so that it cooks evenly. And I am not someone who trusses a chicken terribly well. I've learned it many times. I've learned many different ways of doing it. Um, and some people that I speak with say, don't trust the chicken. Just, uh, just throw it in. Don't bother tying it up. Just let it go wild. And other people are very adamant that you have to. Um, and I'm somewhere in the middle. In the end, if you only tie the legs together, I think you're doing great. So we put this onto a shallow tray. I've just got a small baking tray. The chicken is fully above the tray, which allows the heat to circulate really nicely all around it. So I'm just gonna wash my hands and then stick it into the oven. So the cooking instructions are fairly convoluted. The chicken apparently goes into the back corner, the legs facing the back left corner for the first 20 minutes. And then after the first 20 minutes, we turn the temperature down to 400 and we go another 10 minutes. And then after the first 30 minutes, you turn the chicken to face the other corner. And then we go 30 more minutes. So that is an interesting looking chicken you've made today, Glenn. It's uh... um, so it's a buttermilk roasted chicken or a roasted buttermilk chicken. Okay. So it's, it's been in buttermilk um, for about 24 hours. Okay, so all the flavor's already embedded in it because clearly there's none on the outside. Yeah, it's just buttermilk and salt. Okay. Um, and then I trust it and I shouldn't have trusted it. I shouldn't have trust it or tied it up. Oh, um, okay. I did it because people expect you to trust a chicken. And because we trust, you've got areas that aren't brown. Aren't, aren't brown, yeah. Um, I, chefs are, are uh, torn on that. Are they? Yeah, whether whether it's a good idea or not. You could have spatchcocked this and... I should have actually spatchcocked it. So, uh, let's check it out. That looks nice and moist. Yep. It is. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what your plan is, but go for it. That's a nice brown skin. Let's. The real test of any chicken is the breast meat, right? Is it dry? Is it. Well, it doesn't look dry. No, it does not look dry at all. Um, but does it have any flavor? I don't know. Dun dun dun. It's definitely very moist. Mm-hmm. Um, it tastes like chicken. It tastes like chicken. So that's the thing. <laughs> that is the thing. It's We're not trying to hide the flavor of the chicken. What this person wanted us to taste... Was the chicken. Was the chicken. Yeah. To I, bring all of the flavors of the chicken out. And I think... I think you could start with this base and add whatever flavors you like with chicken. You could add a ton of different flavors like, do you want to, to it. Yeah. I don't know what you like. Thyme? So the, rosemary? I don't know. The buttermilk, mm -hmm. um, according to the chef, and I believe her, covers most of your mistakes. <laughs> so overcooking, yes. all those kinds of things that you can do wrong. With... It, it gives you a wide margin of error. So you could really screw this up and it would still taste good. So it's a bit like when you make uh, a cake or a muffins that have lots of oil in them. Or sour cream. They're always, or, yeah, they're they're always, always moist, moist because... Yeah they have that ingredient and that's what the buttermilk brings to it. So that's great. That's an easy thing to know that if you're going to, if you're going to, yeah. So the chicken tastes like chicken. Um, and you could definitely use the buttermilk as a flavor carrier for just about anything, yeah. you know, dill, lemon, whatever. Um, so this is a winner. It's a good recipe. There you go. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.